Hi, I'm Chad Wunderlich with Viking Pump. And when talking about rotary pumps, you also have to talk about motors. The two go hand in hand. Pump, motor. Pump, motor. Pump, pump, pump. Motor, motor, motor. In this pump report, let's switch things up and talk about motors. You're watching the motor report. Pump report. Rotary pumps require a rotating power source to drive them. This could be a gas engine, hydraulic motor, or even a hand crank, but the vast majority utilize motors, specifically AC induction motors. Now to be clear, Viking Pump is not a motor manufacturer, so we'll only be covering basic motor concepts and how they relate to pump operation. Today we'll cover motor basics, speed and slip, the difference between single phase and three phase power, and motor frames. Let's start with the basics of horsepower, torque, and speed. Horsepower is a unit of measurement of the rate at which work gets done, or power. The term horsepower is literally an approximation of the power of a draft horse. This value was used to compare the delivered power of steam engines, and later electric motors, to that of horses. Scottish engineer James Watt determined that a draft horse could roughly lift a thousand pound weight, 33 feet, in one minute. The SI unit of power, the Watt, is named after him. Torque is a related but not identical term. It's a measurement of the twisting force supplied by the motor to the driven equipment. A common example of this concept is a wrench turning a bolt. A force applied at the end of the wrench exerts a twisting force, or torque, on the bolt that is equivalent to the product of the force and the distance. Common units of measure are pound-feet or newton meters. It's important to note that unlike centrifugal pumps, Viking pumps are a constant torque load. This is an important concept to note both for motors and drives. Motor speed is the rotational speed of the motor shaft measured in revolutions per minute or RPM. Motor speed is determined by the number of poles and electrical frequency. Concepts we'll discuss shortly. Speed, torque, and horsepower are related by this equation. Viking pump maximum speed ratings are based on these common 60 hertz motor speeds which are why many of our pump curves end at a maximum speed of 1800 or 1200 RPM. As promised, let's talk more about those motor concepts related to speed. These include electrical frequency, poles, and slip. Frequency is a measure of cycles of alternating electrical current, or AC power. It's measured in units of hertz, which is a measurement of cycles per second. AC frequency varies from country to country. North America, most of South America, and a handful of other countries use 60 Hz AC power. The remainder of countries use 50 Hz AC power. Since this frequency is 17% lower, motors will run 17% slower than their counterparts in 60 Hz regions. Another key factor in determining motor speed is the number of magnetic poles utilized in the design of the motor. These poles must come in pairs, so the number of poles will only be an even number, such as two, four, six, eight, and so on. Two pole motors run the fastest. Doubling that to a four pole motor cuts that speed in half. An eight pole motor would run half the speed of a four pole motor, and so on. Adding poles decreases the speed, increases the torque rating, and improves the starting characteristics. The downside? Motors with more poles are physically larger and typically more expensive. For Viking pump units, four pole and six pole motors tend to be the most common. So far, we've just been talking about speeds when the motor is unloaded. In reality, motors are typically powering equipment at or nearly at their rated horsepower. Running at rated horsepower, the motor is at a point known as full load. Under full load, there is a difference between the motor speed and the magnetic field applied. This difference in speed is known as motor slip. Full load speed is always lower than that of unloaded speed, but can range from design to design. The motor nameplate speed will be the full load value for the motor. In an industrial setting, users often have access to two electrical power systems, single phase or three phase. Here we see the difference between these two systems. With single phase, a single current source provides all of the available power. In a three phase system, three current sources supply power 120 degrees out of phase with each other. AC motors are designed and nameplated to be used with only one of these systems. So it's important to specify and select the correct motor based on the power supply. Single phase motors tend to be small motors and are common for applications of three horsepower and below. Due to the location, it may be the only power source available. 
three-phase motors are not limited and can be small or hundreds of horsepower. They draw less current and are more efficient than their single-phase counterparts. For these reasons, three-phase motors are more commonly supplied with Viking pumps. Motor frame is a term used to describe the key dimensions of a motor, such as the shaft diameter and the shaft height. This consistency makes sure that motors are interchangeable and mount correctly to associated drive equipment. NEMA is the most common standard in North America. Common NEMA motor frame sizes for Viking pumps are shown here. They are available with or without a C-face mount. C-face frames allow for the mounting of equipment directly to the motor. This could be a C-face mounted gear reducer or a pump. To designate a C-face, the letter C is added to the end of the frame number. These frames come standard with a foot for mounting the motor to the base plate. The other common global standard is IEC, which is most commonly used outside of North America. It is different than NEMA in three key ways. First, the junction box is located on top of the motor as standard, instead of the NEMA side mount. Second, the frame number is only part of the designation. A motor mounting code is also needed to specify whether the motor has a foot and the type of mounting face. Lastly, there are two different standards for flange faces a larger B5 or a smaller B14. This is also important to check to make sure that the motor mounted equipment, like reducers and pumps, will fit it. Admittedly, this is all just scratching the surface when it comes to motors, but hopefully has given you the basics you'll need to properly size and select a motor to be used with your pump. If you'd like to learn more about motors or to view other pump reports, please visit our website at vikingpump.com.